I have some new products from Kat Von D to share with you guys today, including the new Serpentina eyeshadow palette, which I did do a demo using a few of the shades, which will be towards the end of the video if you're interested in that, which is the colors that are on my eyes. I also purchased the powder, one of the concealers, and the four new brushes so I thought I would go ahead and incorporate it all together and show you guys. I'll start off with the Kat Von D Locket setting powder. There's 0.67 ounces of product in here which is a decent amount of product and then the container is super cute. It's got uh, the Kat Von D logo kind of raised on the lid there and originally I thought that when, like, when I saw promos like on Instagram and stuff I thought there was going to be different tones or shades to choose from but this is the only shade on there and it says translucent on the back. This particular powder leans on the warm side it almost has like a yellow tint to it and I did set my concealer with it yesterday and it did slightly deepen up underneath my eyes so like something like the RCMA no color powder actually giving me a brightening effect this did not I'm yet to set my entire face with this um, Currently I'm using a powder with SPF in it because I'm outside so much, so I'll probably use this more in the fall, um, winter type of time. The actual formulation of it is super finely milled. Um, I thought that there might be silica in here because it's so like, it's so buttery feeling. And I'm not a big fan of silica because it dries out my skin, but there's not. I'm happy to report there's not silica in here. The formulation of the powder is really nice. I just, I wish that, I wish that would have came in like a light pink tone as well. Or a couple different other tones. Maybe she's going to come out with that. I don't know. But the um, powder itself is just really, really silky smooth. I think I read jojoba on the ingredients. Yeah, I just wish that the tone was a little bit more brightening so I could set underneath my eyes with it. Because it did look really nice underneath the eyes. And I'm sure it'll be a really pretty setting powder once I get around to using it like that. I had a hard time choosing the shade of concealer to get. I was going between five and then the one that I got, which is L1 Neutral. And I was surprised to see that in the lighter end of the spectrum there weren't any with cool undertones. It kind of got in the mid to like light um, further down the range there was a cool undertone. Um, so I ended up picking up L1, which I almost purchased the white concealer because I thought it would be a good mixer, but this is going to do the trick because this is also very, very light. Um, there's 0.22 ounces of product in here. It comes with a doe foot applicator. The formulation is quite creamy, um, but it still has a little bit of thickness to it, and boy, it does cover. I only used this once. I mixed it in with the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. Ironically enough, the lightest shade in the Too Faced Born This Way concealer is a little bit on the deeper side. So um, I did mix this in with it, and it blended out really nice. So I did order the shade, I think it's L5, um, and that should be coming either today or tomorrow. So I'm excited to use this as a standalone concealer, but this here is just at least maybe in the middle of winter. <laughs> It'll be fine like that but for right now it's just a little bit too light. And then I did purchase the four new makeup brushes. This first one is the number 20 Locket Setting Powder Brush and I've actually been using this to set my face with like my SPF powder uh, for the past three days because I did get this stuff like three days ago. I just haven't been able to film. I've been like super busy but um, I have been using it to set like on this side here. And this it's like a more, I would say it's a more structured um, slightly smaller version of like something like the Real Techniques blush brush. It's really super soft, but it's not, it's not super, super dense. It's got quite a bit of movement in there. So like if you were to set your, you know, your face, it's got nice movement to it. And I do quite like it. There is the Kat Von D logo and then the other side, it's got the number and then the handles are pointy. I do wish that the weight of the brush was distributed a little bit more evenly through the brush because most of the weight is kind of in the ferrule which when you have a handle this thin it kind of, you know, it kind of goes like that. It's not a big deal because you can hold it, you know, further down but just something to make note of and they're all like that. The next brush is the Brush 25. It's the Precision Powder Brush and I've been using this to set my concealer. It's a little bit large for something that I normally use underneath the eyes to set concealer but it does do the job. It actually fits nicely for underneath this area right here, but it's when I set right in here, I have to be a little bit more precise. There is a slight point to it, which makes that a little bit easier to get into those corners. Um, but it's almost, you almost would think it's like a, um, it kind of resembles a flat, uh, a flat, fluffier version of a foundation type of brush. I wish it was just a hair smaller so I could really get up in here when I when I set, but it does do the job. Next up is the Locket Edge Foundation Brush. And this one here, I was like, ah, I don't know if I'm, I would use something like that, but surprisingly, I really have been enjoying it to put on my BB cream. It's got a, a point to it, like it's tapered this way. This is the side of the brush. And then both sides have got like a um, indented but flat 
on there and it kind of it kind of is like a buffer and a flat foundation brush kind of in one but with more buffing action to it if that makes sense but I've really been enjoying this to put on my foundation and then because it has this edge right here you could kind of really get into the sides of the nose and stuff like that so I, I was really surprised with how much I've been enjoying using this and this is the number 10 brush and the last brush is the Locket Edge Concealer Brush number 40 and this one I, I wasn't again same thing with like I felt about the foundation brush I didn't think I would love this but I love this. <laughs> I really like this. It's got the exact same shape as the foundation brush, just a smaller version of it. And then both of these brushes, the foundation and the concealer brush, are more densely packed as opposed to the setting, the two setting brushes, which are a little bit more loose. Again, because it has this point, it really gets nicely and precise. You know, that indentation right here in the eye, it just fits really nicely in there and I really I really like this brush I probably am gonna order another one um, I don't like to take concealer all the way up underneath right here because it kind of accentuates my little under eye wrinkles and this just I mean it just blends out really nice and because of that tip like that it gets in this inner corner and right up in here just nice I was really surprised with how much I enjoyed using a concealer brush in this type of a shape so that's the number 40 brush and then lastly, we've got the Serpentina eyeshadow palette, and this contains eight eyeshadows that are 0.04 ounces a piece, which is on par with the majority of the sizes in Kat Von D's eyeshadow palettes. And then this also has a loose eye pigment, which is 0.05 ounces. I'll just read what Kat Von D says on the back of the palette for you guys. It says, the inspiration for this palette came more from a sentiment versus an actual muse, but if I had to choose a physical representation, I'd say it's inspired by the essence of Egypt, Cleopatra to be specific. Although she's portrayed as one of the most beautiful women in history, the truth is her most powerful qualities were her intelligence and self-creation. She was the original pioneering woman, slash uh, Kat Von D. <laughs> the packaging is a cardboard. It's a different style packaging than Kat Von D has ever done in that it's long and kind of a thin, but thick in width and then inside you do have a mirror that does not prop itself open and then here are your eight shades and the loose eyeshadow pigment if I pull that out you can kind of see the cardboard type in there which I they could align this or something because this just looks to me it just looks a little unfinished like that now I've used every shade in this palette over the past three days and this palette for me is not a standalone palette. I have been pairing it um, with the Kat Von D Shade and Light palette which is the all matte neutral palette and in conjunction with that palette I've really been enjoying the looks that come out of this but for the most part everything in here is either a mid-tone or deeper. I can understand in terms of if you think of Cleopatra, this is right on par with, you know, like the imagery that you see of Cleopatra and the makeup and stuff like that. And normally when I get a new palette, I like to stick to just that palette to see what would come out of it. But this is one that I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't able to do that with because everything is so dark. I mean, I could have, but I don't feel like the look would have came out a little nuts. And I've done some crazy looks, you know, some bright looks, but there's just, not, there's not a light, sh a really light, like, either matte or a light shade in general in here or type, like transition or something. There's only two mattes which are the red blood milk and the purple venom and everything else has got like a shimmer or a sheen to it. So for me this is just not a standalone. But paired with the shade and light palette I did really like the looks that came out of it. I paired the shade and light with the eyeshadows blood milk, hieroglyph, queen, and profit. I use those four today with the shade and light eyeshadow palette to get the look that's on my face and I feel like all the eyeshadows blended really well I've used every single one and each shadow for me had nice pigmentation and they blended really well on the eyes um, swatching them and putting a brush in them I did get fallout with quite a few of the shades and then the two shades with micro glitter in there which is Medusa and Ankh A-N-K-H um, are a little gritty in texture. I definitely feel that this palette isn't going to be for everybody and I really wish I was excited when the little shade and light eyeshadow palette co uh, quince came, quads came out and they were in that hard plastic packaging because I was thinking oh Kat Von D's going to start doing like a harder plastic packaging now but this is in cardboard and while I love the imagery across the entire palette I think it's really cool I wish it was in plastic. <laughs> With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in up close to the palette and give you guys some swatches. And hopefully you'll be able to see like the texture and the colors and stuff like that well enough so that you can determine whether it's something you'll want. So here is the outside packaging and then you've got 
some gold there and then the back are your shades and then your pigment right there and it flips open and here's your mirror and then here is the inside of the palette so for mattes you've got blood milk and venom and then the two shades that I'd mentioned that had the micro glitters in it are Medusa and Ankh. And then for just like shimmer shades are these four right here, which are Queen, Hieroglyph, Nile, and Scarab. And then you've got Prophet, which is like an old gold type pigment. So here's the pigment. We'll go ahead and open it up. Here's the inside. It's like an old gold and depending on what you kind of blend it into, it will pull a little bit more green or a little bit more gold I found. But the pigment is really nice. Um, each time that I've used this, I've used it on the lid and it does transfer for me, which is kind of typical of really shiny eyeshadows anyway, because I have hooded lids, but this one transferred pretty quickly. And I did have fallout with this guy as well, but I did use it dry as opposed to wet. Okay, now I'll start with Blood Milk and Medusa. Which I used Blood Milk today, and I used Medusa yesterday, but... And then we'll do Ankh and Queen, which Ankh is a little bit on the dry side and it has the glitter in there as well. I did use Ankh the first time that I used it, and this for the most part for me is a black eyeshadow. It looks brown, like a dark brown when you first look at the palette, but on it definitely pulls black. This shade is really beautiful. And then the next ones are Hieroglyph and Nile. Which the pigments are there, but like I said, these do have um, some fallout to them. Look at that blue. Oh, when I blend it out, you can kind of see some of it fell down there. but. And then the last two shades are Scarab and Venom, which is the other matte. So those are all the colors in the palette. So you can see um, everything's vivid type of colors and definitely they're on the medium to dark side. So nothing really light in here. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Now, while I'm not nuts about the packaging um, and the fact that it's not a standalone palette, what I do like is that it's it's something unique that has come out, you know, and I feel like nowadays when makeup's launching and stuff, it's a little, it can be a little, things can get repetitive, and I feel like this is a little bit more on the unique side of things. It's a fun palette. It's just not going to be for everybody. Now, if you're interested in seeing a couple of those shades perform and the look that's on my eyes right now, you can hang tight and we'll get into it right now. And using a flat shader from Hakuhodo, I'm going to go into the shade Hieroglyph. And I'm going to pack that starting on the center of the lid because I'm not quite sure how dark it's going to... Yeah, it's about a mid-tone color. Then using that same brush, I'm going to go into the shade Queen. And I'm going to put that on the outer portion and blend it into Hieroglyph. Oh, I kind of got a little out of control there. <laughs> Again, using that flat shader, I'm going to use the Kat Von D Metal Crush Eyeshadow in Static Age. And I'm going to put that on the inner portion. Then using a Chicago GSN 9, I'm going to go into the shade Blood Milk, which would be the first matte I'm dipping into. Well, one of two mattes in the palette. I'm going to put that in the crease. For some reason, I don't know why I'm having like a hard time seeing today. <laughs> I'm gonna like bring it outwards. And I do have some fallout that I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe away right away. 
For the rest of the look, I'm going to use the Kat Von D shade and light eyeshadow palette. I'm going to use a T7 by Chikuhoto and I'm going to go into this shade. And I'm going to start blending out that red. Then on this Chikahoto eyeshadow brush, I'm going to go into this shade from the Shade and Light and put that underneath the brow. Then using Hakuhoto J 5533 back into this color, and I'm going to put a little bit more of that through here. And almost bring it up to like the base of the front of the brow. nuts about the silver that I put on the inner corner so I'm going to take the pigment that came with the palette and it's kind of like an old gold with a slight bit of green and I'm just going to kind of go over that. This is a little too dark for something that I want on the inner corner but maybe that silver will yeah it did. The silver kind of lightened it up. Cool. I'm glad I went over the silver with the pigment because I like it quite a bit better. So there's the eye shadow done. I'm going to go ahead and finish out my eye makeup and I'll be right back to put on some lips for you guys. For lips, I've got Charlotte Tilbury's Lip Cheat in Pink Venus. And I'm going to go ahead and line my lips with that guy. It's called like Pink Venus, but it's like a coral to me. So corally pink, I guess. And then to fill them in, I've got one of Buxom's Bold Gel Lipsticks, and this is in the shade Coral Confession. And there is the overall finished look using Kat Von D's new Serpentina eyeshadow palette. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.